Runaway Brides of Reddit, what's your story? What was the final straw? How last second did you leave? Story 1. On my 18th birthday, my boyfriend proposed to me at my party in front of all of my family and friends. I said yes, mostly because I was too embarrassed to say no. We had been dating for two years, but I was just about to start university. I wasn't ready at all. I asked later, when we were alone, if we could have a long engagement, at least a year or two, and he agreed. We told our families and friends we would be waiting to get married. Less than three months later, his mom and my mom took me out for lunch and decided to take me to look at wedding dresses because it's never too early to start planning. When I saw a really lovely dress that was on sale, my fiancé's mother insisted on buying it for me. Their family was quite wealthy and had set money aside for all of my fiancé's milestones, education, first car, wedding, etc. She told me they were happy to cover the major costs as they were the ones who wanted a big wedding and joked I could pay her back in grandchildren. A few weeks later, his mom introduced me to a friend who was a florist. Next thing I know, I'm looking at bouquets and discussing table arrangements. Then my fiancé starts talking about venues for our wedding, saying we need to start planning so we can find the perfect place. By this point, I'm truly panicking. I'm just a few months into university. I haven't even fully decided what I want to do with my education. Now I'm choosing venues for a wedding that's supposed to be years away. A wedding that's suddenly looking like the nuptials of a minor royal. I tried talking to my fiancé, but he just wouldn't listen. We saw a venue we liked, but they had no availability for almost two years. So we booked it, and I could finally breathe again. I had two years to get ready for my big, fat, crazy wedding. Then the venue had a cancellation for less than six months away, and my fiancé accepted it without telling me. Just canceled our future date and took the one that was now available. Then he arranged the entire wedding with the help of his mom and mine, oh no, her helicopter ways, before telling me. When he told me everything was booked, I went mental. His reaction was that he'd gone with all of my choices, re-catering, venue, flowers, etc. And so I should be grateful that he'd dealt with all the stressful stuff. All I had to do was turn up. When I explained that I didn't want to get married in six months' time, and that this was the third or fourth time I'd told him I wasn't ready for marriage yet, he told me I was being childish, and that the invitations were at the printer, so it was too late to change my mind. I finally realized that he was manipulating me. So I gave him the engagement ring back and told him I didn't want to see him anymore. I told my family and friends, cried a lot, changed my number because he wouldn't stop calling, etc. Two months later, my mom got a call from his mother because she hadn't been able to get in touch with me to arrange dress fittings and finalize bridesmaids. He hadn't told them we split up. My mother explained everything to his mother and figured that was that. The following week, she had the audacity to present my family with a bill for half of what they had paid out for the wedding. It came to thousands of pounds. They'd booked everything, right down to the cake and the favors, without telling me and wanted me to pay. Story 2. I was 17 at the time and still in high school. Met an alleged army guy, pre-full swing internet, so no way to really check, and we hit it off. I was young and fell in love with guys really fast, so when he proposed, I was ecstatic. The red flags were there. He asked my parent for permission. He proposed loudly at a pizza shop, which, socially, would have been too awkward to say no anyway. He didn't have his own place. I never met his family. I never saw any evidence of being in the military. Cue a few weeks later. We had a fight because he called out his sister's name during close relationship. He then told me that everything would be fine because he was going to take me to Kentucky to live on an army base. He also told me he wanted me to be barefoot and pregnant most of the time. Ha ha ha. We were going to get married and leave the day after I graduated high school. I did some real soul searching. I became withdrawn and quiet. I was visiting my Nana one day and she asked me, are you in love with him or in love with the idea of a wedding? And just like that, the bubble burst. I cried and broke it off with him, point two weeks before I graduated. Apparently, he had already booked the justice of the peace. But he got married anyway three weeks later with the same ring he gave me. Poor girl. I wish I knew her so I could warn her. Story three. Had a friend that didn't know she was the bride until she was halfway down the aisle. Her parents had arranged a marriage for her, common in her culture and had told her that the family had all been invited to a cousin's wedding. My friend was told everyone was going to be wearing white for whatever reason. I don't remember. They arrived at the church just before the bride was scheduled to walk down the aisle. My friend, thinking they're late, wanted to slip in and stay in the back. Her father, however, takes her arm and they start walking up the aisle. It isn't until they're halfway up that she stops and realizes everyone is looking at her and smiling and crying tears of joy. She turned to one of her aunts in the pew next to her and asked them who was getting married. The whole church went silent, and then the aunt looked at my friend's father and said, 
You can't be serious. You planned a wedding for your daughter and just expected her to go along with it? Have the two of them even met? Did you seriously think this would work? The whole room was them chattering about them, and the father just cleared his throat and told his daughter to keep walking. Luckily, the aunt grabbed my friend first and pulled her into the pew, pushed her past the row of people, and they both ran out of the church. Her parents disowned her after that, and she moved in with that aunt. Edit. They are an Indian family in the U.S. Her parents are very traditional, and she expressed that she didn't want to get married and wanted to focus on her career. Story 4. A woman I briefly dated was a runaway bride. Her ex never hit her, but constantly belittled her and was basically emotionally abusive. Your standard kit? Telling her she was lucky he wanted her, that she could never find anyone better, that she was ugly but he dealt with it, etc., etc., etc. She was a smart kid, was a medic in the military, saving dozens of lives in Pakistan. But emotionally manipulative people can get anyone if given enough time, and he got her. On her wedding day, her dad, who wasn't usually in the picture, having divorced when she was a teen, was having a conversation with her in the ready room and got concerned when she started repeating a lot of the things her fiancé was saying to her. She said that she was mid-sentence when he stood up and said, let's go to Dairy Queen, out of the blue. When she was little, they often went to DQ and talked over ice creams. She took a second, agreed, and they left to go to DQ. But he drove three towns over, and they sat and talked over ice cream for hours while her phone rang the battery dead in the car. She said she felt like a huge weight was lifted and felt bad that her friends and family were waiting for her, but they would all understand later. He eventually went back to the church and told the bridal party it wasn't happening and got his buddies to come and move all her stuff out the next day. She said that while her dad wasn't the best father in her teens, he was the best dad anyone could ask for that day. We dated for a couple weeks before we figured out we weren't a good match. We parted amicably, but I haven't talked to her since. Story 5. My dad was a runaway groom. Broke it off three days before the wedding. Mid-1970s, so he was in his early 20s. His fiancée, not my mom, obviously, and her mother pressured him into proposing, which he did with my grandmother's ring. He also felt society sort of demanded it. It was more common to marry at that age than it is today. Deep down, he knew she simply wasn't the one, but figured maybe all men felt that way before a wedding, so he ignored that and hoped his feelings would change. Months passed and the wedding was all planned out. When relatives and friends from out of town began flying in for the wedding and gifts were arriving, reality hit him hard, and he, to quote Gob Bluth, realized he made a huge mistake. He sat my grandma and grandpa down and said, Guys, I don't want to do this. They were proud of him for being honest and actually sort of thrilled. It turns out they hated her guts, but they told him he needed to immediately tell her face to face. And so my dad did. Like a scarred war veteran, he refuses to tell me details, but said it was the most gut-wrenching conversation argument hell he had ever experienced. But he ended it. Of course, this was the 1970s. You can't just mass announce the wedding is canceled via a text or Facebook message, which a friend of mine did. My dad took the responsibility of calling every single invited guest to tell them the wedding was off. Even more, he personally returned gifts to the people who sent them. His fiancée sold my grandmother's ring. Story 6? Not me, and I'm not sure it counts as runaway, but my sister broke up with her fiancée four months before their wedding, which was already planned and paid for. I'll be honest, I don't know the full story. Even now, 18 months later, she still hasn't fully opened up to us about it, but I never really liked the guy. He was nice enough, but he absolutely could not handle his drink. He could never have a little drink, no. He had to drink the whole bar every time, then would come home and puke up over the entire house. He then had the audacity to complain whenever my sister would go out with her friends just for a couple of drinks, to the point where he eventually just stopped letting her go out altogether. His family was an absolute mess as well. His mom and stepdad were pretty cool, but they moved to Canada to pursue their dreams, leaving my sister and her fiancé in the hands of aunts and uncles who did not approve of her at all. His little brother was on off with his teenage girlfriend he eventually knocked up, and who was always trying to one-up my sister too. Eventually, as far as she's told us, she just felt trapped by the guy. She was prohibited from hanging out with her friends and was forced to go to family events with people who despised her. He made her distance herself from us, which I think was painful for her as she essentially missed quality time with her new nephews at the time. He basically controlled every aspect of her life. Anyway, she unceremoniously dumped him on New Year's Eve and canceled the wedding then and there. I don't think she even saw him again after that. She was always out when he came to collect his stuff. Obviously, his family weren't too happy about it and harassed her for months. She became depressed and needed medication. But it was my family that had to foot the wedding bill anyway.
They were just glad to have their daughter back. Story 7. Mu boyfriend at the time had a female friend who, the night before her wedding, finally spilled to several friends, including him, that her fiancé had been emotionally and physically abusing her, and she wasn't sure she should get married. We'd all noticed her being distanced from us, but she'd deny every time that something was wrong. The next day, her family mobilized to get the word out to all her guests, and a bunch of her friends essentially forced themselves into the guy's house to get all her things back. My boyfriend was a cop, so had a duty to press charges or something on the guy. I was never clear on this part. The woman was pissed off at him for a while, but now a few years later is seeing someone great whom I've actually known forever, and is quite a bit happier now. Plus, she knows her friends and family have her back and can get cow done. Story 8. Told this story before on a somewhat similar post, but was engaged, so almost a bride. And there were several final straws. A few were before the engagement. He lived in his car, no judgment on that, but this is relevant, at the time, so was not financially stable, and this was just a couple weeks into dating. Another was him wanting me to send selfies of myself proving where I was at all times and what I was wearing, which was 99.9% .9 my work clothes, long sleeve shirts and pants cause I'm server, and at work. So if I wasn't texting back fast enough, apparently I was with another man. About a month into the relationship, he demanded a key to my condo so he could see me whenever he wanted. The final straw was when he proposed for down on one knee and said, I knew we were meant to be the moment we matched. On Tinder, go figure. I love you so much. Now I can show everyone I own you. Will you marry me? Boy, bye. That was three months into the relationship. I had never met his family but heard a lot about them. He had only ever met my mother, but that wasn't planned. I said no immediately and walked away. He tried getting into my condo countless times and calling me. Unfortunately, I had to change my number and get a restraining order against him. He was and probably still is crazy AF. Story 9. One of the people I know is what I can call a serial fiancé. She dates guys right until they propose to her. Then she says yes, starts looking for venues, dresses, etc. And then she calls off the wedding and breaks up with the guy saying, I didn't want to marry him anyway. He's, insert reason here. The last time this happened, she had an AMA about her wedding on Instagram. But two months before the supposed date of the wedding, all her photos, AMA answers, and mentions of engagement were gone. Maybe she's getting a kick out of it, I don't know. Story 10? Not me, but my mother. My mom called off a wedding just weeks before the ceremony date because she found out her fiancé had lied to her about his whereabouts and was partying at a hotel with friends and other women. She caught him in a hot tub at 1 a.m. with twin sisters. Fast forward about three years later. She starts dating and later marries the man who is my biological father. She said meeting the family was especially awkward when she discovered my father had three sisters, two of which were the twins she caught her ex-fiancé with in the hot tub. Edit. Wow, thank you for the silver! Never thought this would be the post to receive it. Some things to clarify. My mom and dad stayed together and later got married after my mom had learned who his sisters were. So she did get over the fact that they were essentially what ruined her first wedding. My mom and dad are divorced now and have been for years, which is unrelated to my dad's sisters or his family in general. They just weren't compatible together and argued a lot. Not a big surprise that my dad wasn't the most faithful man either. I get my faithfulness in relationships from my mom, thank God. Story 11. Not my story, but my best friend's. Note. I had her permission to tell this story. Back in high school, I had this friend called Cheyenne. We were very close and louved planning our dream weddings. Every month when the new bridal magazine came in, we spent free period at a bench with a pen circling and gushing over dresses. Flash forward to junior year and she meets this guy called Nick. Nick was fairly popular at our school, mainly known for his older sisters who were triplets and just known for being the triplets. She and him started dating after a couple weeks and it was not good. They were on and off and on and off all the time, and it was known that he cheated on her every other weekend when she was away at her mom's house. After they graduated, they broke up for a little bit and got back together after three, four months. Halfway through sophomore year of college, Cheyenne starts acting very out of character. She started drinking pretty heavily, and due to that we got in a fight and didn't speak for a year. When we did, it was because she found out she was pregnant with Nick's baby and they were planning to get married. I was ecstatic and soon we regained our original closeness. I was going to be her mo, and they were going to have a beautiful wedding in the mountains. Day of Cheyenne seemed shaky and odd. She insisted she was fine, but I kept an eye on her. Fifteen minutes before we're scheduled to walk down the aisle, I run outside real quick to see where Cheyenne was because she had stepped out and no one knew where she was. I get to the road close by and see a little pair of heels by. I leave the shoes in case she was planning on coming back and go tell the DOC. Ceremony gets put on hold and we're all looking around for Cheyenne. 
and I see Nick get really angry and hear him mutter, that oh no bad person when I get my hands on her. Now I don't know what the hell to do. I'm getting concerned for Cheyenne, worried she fell down the hill or something, so we have people looking all around. I smell something fishy and think that maybe she ran off, considering their past and what I just heard Nick say. I drive into town, which was just a 10-minute drive, more like a 45 one-hour long walk, and see Cheyenne in her big white fluffy dress, easy to spot, walking into a bar. I go in to talk to her, ask her what the hell happened, and she confessed that Nick had been verbally, physically, and abusing her since high school. Apparently that morning he threatened her that if she didn't behave, he'd terminate her and her baby. I called the police immediately, notified the DOC to just cancel it all, and that I found her and drove her to the hospital. Long, messy trial later plus a restraining order, he was behind bars and she moved to Portand so she'd be close enough to her family but far enough away from him. Now she's getting remarried in September 2020 and her baby is now four years old and beautiful. Her name is Harmony. Story 12. I've waited a very long time to share this. Years ago, I was a single mom, working hard but not getting ahead at all. Met a good guy type, architect, good sense of humor, etc. We dated for about a year, then got engaged. Then the unthinkable happened, and this is where I am the unpleasant person in many people's minds. He was in a horrible car accident, broke both of his femurs and his back about 10 months before our wedding. He was a poorly controlled diabetic as well, so his healing was significantly delayed. He ended up confined to an electric wheelchair, and since his legs were in casts from hip to ankle, his legs had to be extended straight out in front of him at all times. I really, really tried to stick by him, but he made it flipping impossible. He did nothing but pour out the water and moan and bad person about every single thing that the doctors told him. Refused physical therapy? Would not take his medication correctly? Did not cooperate with wound care? Wouldn't take his insulin correctly? All the things that make for a horrible patient and even worse person to be around. He managed to get addicted to the narcotics, sleeping pills, and Xanax as well. Through all this, our wedding planning was still happening, mostly by his family. He was moved from the hospital to a Levin group home where he only declined. Wearing pants was difficult, so he wore nothing on his bottom half for months, just happy with a bedsheet over his lap. No matter what, his moods were totally uncontrollable. He became violent and so verbally abusive. One evening, he missed a final Jeopardy question and threw his open urinal at me. Even after the doctors had insisted that he had to start bending his legs, he absolutely refused. Nope, not going to do it. Fast forward to my wedding day. The staff at the group home went balls to the wall to decorate the backyard and make this day so special for everyone. It really was lovely. Our families were gathered and seated and the pianist was playing and my dad was by my side. They opened the door for us to start down the aisle and there he sat with his legs straight out and hospital socks sticking out from under a blanket. I froze. Told my dad I needed to go back in the house. Once we were out of earshot of everyone, I told my dad I couldn't do this. I'm so sorry. My dad simply smiled and said, thank God. He signaled for my kids to come to the side, loaded them and me up in his car, and we drove off. We ended up moving a state away, closer to my family and thriving. The groom did end up in and out of several facilities and has never left the wheelchair. I realize fully that he was probably suffering from the type of physical, emotional, and mental pain that I will never comprehend. But I knew that I could not raise my kids in that type of environment, and my first commitment was to them. I went on to finish my own degree, and my kids are now adults. No one has thrown urine at me since. Story 13. I was almost the runaway bride, and I regret not making that decision. Dated my high school sweetheart for almost two years before the jealousy became overwhelming. I broke up with him a month after we'd graduated, but we were going to the same college and met up again that fall. I found myself pregnant by that October and was kicked out of my Catholic home. His parents let me stay with them, but we could no longer live in sin and had to be married. I didn't want to go back to living in my car, so I agreed. Parents wiggle back into my life before the wedding. Fast forward to day of the ceremony and the music begins playing. I stand to start walking down the aisle. My dad takes my hand and says, You know, you don't have to do this. You could come home with us. Could he have mentioned this an hour, a day, a week before? I have always hated drama and didn't want to be that person. So I just said that I couldn't, and I got married. My ex was controlling, manipulative, and how abusive he was had become much less subtle side I became pregnant and turned overt when we moved out of his parents' house a year later. I ran when he nearly hit our baby's skull with his shoe, which he threw because he'd found something in the carpet I didn't vacuum properly. Yeah, totally should have picked the runaway bride option. Edit. Thanks for the support, everyone. We're doing great now. Married my best friend from high school 10 years ago. The ex passed away of leukemia. Freedom is sweet. Story 14. Runaway child bride? 
Anyway, when I was about 12 years old, smartphones became a thing. I started talking to a man online. He promised to take me away from my family. We talked every single day and late into the night. We loved each other about as much as a 12-year-old could live a 40-year-old man. He told me he'd make me a mother of many kids and planned to get me pregnant ASAP. One day he drove down from Tennessee to pick me up. He was outside my house waiting for me. I put on my favorite white dress and went out to meet him. Then I froze. My mom had just had yet another baby. I started thinking about all that if miss out on, them growing up. Finishing high school, I went back inside and never saw him again. Story 15. Not a bride, so to speak, but I ran away from a proposal. I was dating this guy who in hindsight was abusive, but at the time I just didn't know. I knew he was bipolar, diagnosed, and came from a very unstable family. I tried being his rock and getting him to a better place and sometimes everything was fine and then others he was just suck a banana. He started talking about marriage about one year into the relationship. We had already split up and gotten back together twice due to him throwing tantrums and having wild mood swings about how he felt about the relationship. I just sort of nodded along because, well, I did think I wanted to spend the rest of my life with him, but I wasn't ready to get married yet. I figured he was talking about someday far in the future when we were on more stable ground. A month later, he proposed, not even in a very eventful way, not saying has to be, I just mean I didn't see it coming. We were at his house as usual. Oh yeah, he lived with his parents. He was playing video games. I was watching TV on my laptop. We had ordered pizza. The pizza arrived and we sat down to eat for a bit. He then produced a ring and proposed. I saw it all flash before my eyes, getting married and being stuck to this person for the rest of my life. I froze, knew I didn't want to say yes, but I was too afraid to say no. Of course, he took my silence as a rejection and started screaming at me about how I was an ungrateful bad person and how could I refuse him. His parents came in and also started screaming at me for rejecting their son. I started crying, got my purse, and ran out of the house. I didn't have my car, so I walked a block and called for an Uber. That poor Uber driver must have been wigged, picking up a girl off the side of the road, bawling her eyes out. I got home, I was shaking. Of course, he tried to call me over and over again, but I refused to speak to him for about three weeks. We eventually talked and I told him I didn't want to be with a person who was so unstable and that he needed to get professional help and get better before he and I could work. He of course never did and I haven't heard from him since. Story 16. We had been together for six months when he proposed. We were both young at the time and weren't even living together. My gut told me right away that it was too soon, but I said yes anyway and went along with it because I thought he loved me and I loved him. I really thought that we could build a nice life together. I made it clear that I wanted to wait a while before we actually got married, but he was keen to speed things along as fast as possible. I didn't even want to tell our families about it yet because I knew they would give us grief over getting engaged so young and after only a few months of being together. As things moved along, I made it clear that I wasn't ready to get married at my age and wanted to spend more time with him before we went through with it. He sort of threw a fit and accused me of cheating on him because there was no other reason in his mind I could possibly want to wait to marry. Things started to get really toxic and I eventually left him for good. I gave him the ring back and parted civilly, but he wasn't about to let it go so easily. He was calling and texting me constantly for weeks, accused me of being obsessed with him and following him around, and I started to realize that he was not in a normal state of mind. I was scared, but it calmed down after a while and things started to get back to normal. Unfortunately, he started spreading all kids of nasty rumors about me, of how I accused him of assault and was abusive towards him. His entire family turned sour towards me because of it, and it was difficult because we shared most of our friends. He ruined my reputation and my self-esteem, but it made me realize that I really dodged one hell of a bullet by refusing to marry him. Every so often, he messages me on social media asking to get back together. I either don't reply or give him a polite but very firm no. This doesn't really matter, but it's another funny little detail. He had my engagement ring to his mother as a Mother's Day gift, and now she wears it all the time. She has to know that it used to belong to me, but still finds it to be a sweet gift from her insane son. Story 17. Not me, but a friend. He was dating a girl he met in university. They had been dating for three or four years. Seemed like a solid relationship. A lot in common. Religion, family values, education goals. A week before their wedding, she goes out on a date with another guy. How did my friend know? She came home and told him she was going out on a date with a guy from her work. She came home late, somewhat drunk, and tries to climb into bed. My friend interrupts her, asking what she's doing. She replies she's tired and wants to go to sleep. He kicks her out of the bed and tells her they're done. Long story short, it was messy. Cancelled wedding plans, awkward explanations to everyone. Poor guy had PTSD for a year from the situation. Story 18. I was 16 years old and working at Chess King in the mall when a man who originally lied about his age saying he was 20, but I shortly found out was 26, 
came in and was extremely enamored with me. I had some daddy issues, loved the attention, and soon thought I was in love. He asked me to marry him two weeks later. He had even asked my parents' permission, and they said yes. I still am upset with them for that. Summer was coming shortly after, and he wanted me to move in with him for the summer. I was living in NY at the time, and he was living in Maryland. He had been in NY visiting his parents and staying with them till his new job started as a used car salesman. So I got in his white pickup truck and drove with him to Maryland for the summer. When I got there, it was a tiny little apartment in an all-neighborhood. We are both white. He had leased the apartment by phone and had no idea what neighborhood it was in, pre-internet. He took his truck to work every day, and I had no transportation, so I would just walk around during the day. Everyone would stare at me, and no one actually talked to me. I felt extremely out of place despite trying my best to be okay with the situation. He wanted close relationship every day the second he got home from work and would want me to be waiting in the bedroom for him. I hated it and would close my eyes till it was over. After five days, I was in the apartment while he was at work, and I opened the silverware drawer and a big cockroach crawled across the utensils. I don't know exactly why that was the turning point for me, but I just said out loud, fudge this. I packed my suitcase and sat on the couch with the suitcase on my lap till he got home from work. The second I saw him, I said, take me home. He said a lot of cow, was angry. I said nothing besides that I wanted to go home. Somehow he agreed to drive me back to NY and we left that night. The whole way home he talked about how this doesn't change anything and that we'll still be together. I stayed silent. When we pulled in the driveway, I took off the ring and set it on the console. I didn't say anything and booked it into the house and locked the door. He didn't come after me but proceeded to call constantly for weeks. I refused to answer. I never saw him again. I'm 41 now and have four children. My oldest is 18. Only as an adult have I been able to see how disgusting and terrifying what I went through was. For years I was embarrassed to tell that story, but now I realize I was a child, and it's him and my parents that should be embarrassed. Story 19. My sister was almost called off her wedding three days before, but changed her mind. They were in pre-wedding couples consoling, and it went horribly. They wanted drastically different futures. She framed out and told my parents she was marking a huge mistake. My parents told her not to get married if she wasn't sure. They paid for everything and didn't care about that. But people were on their way and she was embarrassed. So they told her to have the wedding but not fill out any paperwork or sign the marriage certificate. And that in the future, if they were ready, they could make it legal. Sister refused, had giant wedding, was married for seven months. Divorce cost her about 25k. She somehow blames parents. Story 20. Heard a story from my mom about a friend of hers who planned on getting married. He was a great guy, very loving and responsible, etc., but his one flaw was his terribly bad temper. Their quarrels were always so bad that she would come crying to my mom about how he yelled at her. My mom advised her friend to leave before it's too late, but the friend genuinely thought he would change. The day before the wedding, he threw a tantrum so bad that he yeeted a whole table past her head. She nearly passed away. She canceled the wedding and never talked to him again. Story 21. I was almost a willing accomplice to a runaway groom. My brother was getting ready to marry a gal he had dated and broken up with several times. So anyway, they get engaged and the wedding day comes around. I'm in the wedding party. He and I are standing in the ante room of the church wearing tuxes. He's getting cold feet, saying he doesn't know if he can through with it, etc. I tell him to call it off then. He says he can't. Everyone is here. The reception and honeymoon are planned. I tell him I'll walk out there and announce the wedding is off. You can slip out the back. It'll cost you a lot less money and pain now instead of an hour from now. No, he has to go through with. I thought it would be kind of interesting and cool to call off someone's wedding, but he went through with it. Fast forward 10 or so yires to a bitter, expensive divorce. But he does have two good kids and seems happier. Excuse me, everyone. There's been a slight change of plans. Story 22. My GFS friend got married to a royal flipping shower recently. He called her fat on their first date, forced her to sell the modest house she already owned to buy him a massive flipping monster, forces her to be distant from her friends, and we suspect he hits her, among many other things I'm not privy to. At the wedding, he put together a slideshow which was dominated by pictures of him and his friends, with a few of him and his wife. He spent 80% of his speech talking about how grateful he is for his friends. We were all rooting for her to be a runaway bride. Alas, she went through with it and got understandably drunk. He berated her for being drunk and told her she is an embarrassment, despite being quite inebriated himself. Please, people, if you're in a bad situation, seek help or let your friends help you. Story 23. Not a runaway bride, but was hired to work the wedding as a florist many years ago. Bride and groom had signed off on every contract and was fully prepared to tie the knot. Bride was on tour until two weeks before the wedding date. She's in theater. So we mostly communicated via email and groom would come by to make payments and drop off items for the wedding. 
He was always pretty chill and laid back, not usually common with grooms. Turns out he was cheating on the bride with the bride's sister and the best man's girlfriend, also in their friend group. Bride finds out right before the bachelorette party and calls off the whole thing. Felt awful about not being able to refund any payments since we had placed bulk orders for her flowers, but offered her credit towards another event. We became FB friends. She's marrying someone else now and seems much, much happier. Story 24. Not me, but my cousin was supposed to marry a girl who fell head over heels in love with a guy she met two days before the wedding and left him not literally at the altar, but about as close as you can get. I was five or six and supposed to be a flower girl, and my 16-year-old brothers were the ushers. We lived about six hours away, and I remember being so confused the whole ride home as to why I hadn't been a flower girl while everyone else was dead silent. In a crazy small world, Twist the guy that she fell in love with is a professor at the same university as my brother and has an office down the hall. He and the bride have been married for, I guess, going on 20 years now. Meanwhile, my cousin has been married three times, busted for DUI so many times I don't think he can even get a license, and ballooned up to like 300 LBEs. I think she made the right choice. Story 25. Not me, but someone I know had to twice waste money on flights to some exotic location because the bride ran out on the groom. The first time she ran away right before the rehearsal period started. The second time was at the altar. You would think the guy would have gotten the message the first time around, but apparently it was a situation where a rich but not good-looking guy had managed to snag a supermodel, and in his fear of losing her, he tried to force her into a commitment by being emotionally manipulative, no through coercion, and her feeling guilty, she was convinced twice to almost go through with it. From the pictures my friend showed me of the couple, I can honestly say that the groom was reaching like no other man had reached before. And I can sort of understand why he didn't want to lose her. But I can't condone manipulating someone into pretending to love you, nor him deluding himself into thinking it could work her after the failed wedding the first time around. You're just setting yourself up for disappointment by that point. Story 26. Not me, but my mom. My father left us when I was one yo, so she was single most of her life until 10 years later, she found a great guy that we all loved and wished him in the family. He and my mom dated for years, maybe six, and then he proposed her. She said yes and I remember them planning their wedding. She even got a nice wedding dress. But one day, one day before the wedding, she called him and told him that she couldn't marry him. He is a great guy, still in contact with him, but he is one of those guys that doesn't have a passion nor has a goal in life. And to be honest, he is in a very bad position right now. So for much love my mom had for him, I think she saw a bleak future at his side and decided to remain friends. A little bad person on my mom to say it till the last day, but we're humans after all, I guess. Story 27. Not me, but my best friend was a runaway bride. I guess you can call it because she backed out of the wedding two days before, and she did so by basically packing all her cow while her fiancé, who is a girl. They were lesbians. My friend is with guys now, though. Wasn't home. She, my friend, had logged onto her GFS computer for something. I honestly think she was snooping on her because she had a gut feeling something was wrong. And she found her social media opened up or maybe the login information was saved, and she was able to log in. But you know that when you are logged in on a laptop to FB Messenger, and a person is also using Facebook Messenger at that same time, you can just sit there and watch a conversation take place live. She was watching her GF some other girl who worked at the vet that they had been taking their sickly dog to for his skin conditions. After the wedding being called off her ex-fiancé and that girl from the vet got married and then divorced like super fast because they got in a fight and the vet girl but a chunk of her GFS skull out, like bit the skin right off her head. And then, for no reason whatsoever, according to witnesses, the sliding glass door the vet girl was standing in front of, never actually touched it, just fell down on top of her head and knocked her unconscious. My friend is in an amazing relationship with a man now, and she gets a real kick out of how karma really took care of that situation. Story 28. I'm the groom. I left like 3153600 seconds after the last second. My ex was intellectually unstable. When I started dating her, she was on multiple psych meds that she didn't tell me about. We moved in together and she stopped taking them cold turkey and basically made my life hell. Constantly physically and intellectually abusive. She would go out without telling me, refuse to answer her phone, and then come back and scream at me for watching a movie because it had a pretty actress in it and that actress was a worker. Every other woman on the planet was a worker and a worker and she refused to let me leave the house except to go to work. But she would show up randomly and demand to see me to make sure I wasn't cheating. She was unemployed and I had a pretty good office job. Luckily, my manager took pity on me. Why did I stay? I was not intellectually in a great place. 
I had an incredibly abusive upbringing, so I was used to just taking the abuse. Anyway, I finally agreed to marry her. We planned the wedding and the reception. We had the ceremony and everything, and everyone believed we were married. However, I had a moment of clarity. I refused to sign the marriage certificate to make it official until she went to counseling and got back on her meds. She refused, so I put the certificate away. As far as I knew, that was it. Eventually, I started going to counseling behind her back. I got my act together and started moving my money into my own account that she didn't know about. She kept cheating, I kept up counseling and moving my assets, and then just up and disappeared on her. And finally, the finale. Four years later, I had a new girl. I was getting ready to propose. I had the ring and got an email from the ex. She told me we were actually married and she wanted a divorce because she met a new guy and wanted to get married. What? The fudge? What had happened, I found out, was that she decided that nobody could tell her no. So she took my wallet, got her buddy who looked a lot like me, and took him down to the courthouse to file the certificate a week after I said no. So legally we were married and I had no idea. I was enraged, but at the same time glad she had the timing to tell me before I tried to marry my girlfriend. My girlfriend was a saint, was understanding, and stayed with me while I got the last of my ex squared away. I spoke with a couple lawyers about what I could do, and they said there was nothing that could be done because there was no proof. The good news is that she just wanted the divorce and nothing else. The annoying news was that he current fiancé broke up with her and she dragged her feet. Luckily, it was all taken care of. She randomly still tries to contact me, but I just ignore her. These days, I am still married to the same woman who stayed with me. We are super happy together and have two kids. Story 29. Not me, but a friend's wedding. He was getting married to this groggerous girl. A legit 1010. Pretty flipping great ball and peach, and goddamn did she rock that dress. We were all excited for him because he didn't have the best looks, but was a talented guy with a multitude of talents. He could garden, craft, design, and build. Hell, he designed a watering system for his home garden. When he made it, he was quite proud of himself. But we all just said, couldn't you use a sprinkler? He laughed and then said, yeah, but I made this. The day of the wedding went on as normal. We all met up, talked it out, talked to the girl's family, all of whom were weird. They weren't weird as in culty weird, more like I'd rather not be here weird. And let's just get this over with. Through the wedding starts, flower girls, bride walks down, etc. Right before the vows, our dude bails and just flipping bolts out of the nearby door, leaving the bride standing there. Then the bride, her father, and mother. I cow you not pull out guns and run out the door to try and terminate him, I guess. But he's already so far away, none of their shots hit him. The bride's father is in jail. The mother passed away of a heart attack a year or so later. The bride has become a very minor influencer and has some other guy trapped in her life now. The reason he left was because she was extremely emotionally abusive. She forced him to keep a chart of where he was going, who he was talking to, how much money he had in his bank account, when will he be back, and what exactly he was doing. She refused to let him sleep in the room as her, and if she caught him sleeping on the couch, she would slap him awake. In their three years of a relationship, they only had close relationship twice and he said she was terrible. Literally a dead fish in bed. She also never had any kind of responsibility in her life. Her parents bought her a house, a car, and other things. She crashed a car when she got sick of it. She attempted to terminate his cat multiple times by pouring boiling water on it, and her puppy got lost one day. Bad person was crazy. Story 30. A little long but bear with me because it's a two-for-one sort of. I've been engaged four, five times, married only once. That's important only because it puts these two into context. 1. 2007. The second guy to propose. We met while I was a freshman in college. After a whirlwind romance over all of two weeks, we wildly decided to get married one morning. Spontaneous and romantic, right? 18 ishio. We did not make great decisions. Well, we made it to the courthouse in my small hometown and, luckily, it was closed that particular day for renovations. We were disappointed, but I quickly, internally, decided it was probably for the best. Why rush into it? He called me like that night saying he'd taken some pills and was trying to commit. I talked him down and stayed up all night working stuff out, doing some soul searching. I realized I was not prepared to be married, and he had issues he needed to work through, but I was not intellectually mature or experienced enough to properly handle. When I tried to break up, later, he threatened and I told him I would help as a friend, but not as a significant other. It's been about 12 years and he's so much healthier and happier now, and he's gotten stable and is doing exceptionally for himself. I'm so happy and proud to see him thriving. 2. 2010 to 2012. The fourth guy to propose was a long distance relationship. He was exceptionally handsome, well educated, lived, worked abroad, came from an upper class family, and had me wrapped around his finger. We'd been together for 1.5 years, 
across the U.S., U.K., Denmark, and Germany. And I knew I wanted to get married, but he didn't until I was about to leave him. He didn't want a monogamous relationship like me and suggested we could be one of those modern married couples that still sleep with other people. He constantly called me fat, 5'2 and 120 pounds, used close relationship against me psychologically, didn't want me to work because women in his family didn't, and insisted I give up my U.S. citizenship and drop out of college to move overseas with him and a litany of other things. One night before I was due to fly home, an elderly cabbie asked me, if he won't make the real commitment to you, why are you wasting your time here, Newcastle, England, with him, instead of finding someone who makes you feel whole? I tried making excuses, but he wasn't having it. Later that night, the last straw was that he left me crying in pain in the bathtub from the chlamydia he gave me, to go do candy with his neighbor, for business. I remember as I left for the airport the next morning, I looked at him from the cab and thought, this is going to be the last time I ever see him in person. I reflected on the conversation with the cabbie and essentially ghosted him when I got back stateside. I met my now husband two months later and we married in 2015. My ex stalked me from 2012 to 2018. I've only ever told my husband and best friend how bad it got with him. And even though we've been together almost seven years, I still struggle with it sometimes, especially if my husband gets upset with me, which rarely happens. He's a great guy, sweet, funny, respectful, and patient. TLCR. Second fiancé tried to commit after we narrowly avoided getting married. He's so much better now. Fourth fiancé did terrible abusive things until I ghosted him. Then he stalked me from thousands of miles away for six plus years.